The Anglo-Saxon Chronicle is a collection of annals in Old English chronicling the history of the Anglo-Saxons. The original manuscript of the Chronicle was created late in the 9th century, probably in Wessex, during the reign of Alfred the Great. Multiple copies were made of that one original and then distributed to monasteries across England, where they were independently updated. In one case, the chronicle was still being actively updated in 1154. Nine manuscripts survive in whole or in part, though not all are of equal historical value and none of them is the original version. The oldest seems to have been started towards the end of Alfred's reign while the most recent was written at Peterborough Abbey after a fire at that monastery in 1116. Almost all of the material in the chronicle is in the form of annals, by year, the earliest are dated at 60 BC, and historical material follows up to the year in which the chronicle was written, at which point contemporary records begin. These manuscripts collectively are known as the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle. The chronicle is not unbiased. There are occasions when comparison with other medieval sources makes it clear that the scribes who wrote it omitted events or told one-sided versions of stories. There are also places where the different versions contradict each other. Taken as a whole, however, the Chronicle is the single most important historical source for the period in England between the departure of the Romans and the decades following the Norman Conquest. Much of the information given in the Chronicle is not recorded elsewhere. In addition, the manuscripts are important sources for the history of the English language, in particular. The later Peterborough text is one of the earliest examples of Middle English in existence. Seven of the nine surviving manuscripts and fragments now reside in the British Library. The remaining two are in the Bodleian Library at Oxford and the Parker Library of Corpus Christi College, Cambridge. Composition. All of the surviving manuscripts are copies, so it is not known for certain where or when the first version of the Chronicle was composed. It is generally agreed that the original version was written in the late 9th century by a scribe in Wessex. After the original chronicle was compiled, copies were made and distributed to various monasteries. Additional copies were made for further distribution or to replace lost manuscripts, and some copies were updated independently of each other. Some of these later copies are those that have survived. The earliest extant manuscript, the Winchester Chronicle, was written by a single scribe up to the year 891. The scribe wrote the year number, DCCCXCII, in the margin of the next line. Subsequent material was written by other scribes. This appears to place the composition of the chronicle at no later than 892. Further evidence is provided by Bishop Ass's use of a version of the chronicle in his work Life of King Alfred, known to have been composed in 893. It is known that the Winchester manuscript is at least two removes from the original chronicle. As a result, there is no proof that the chronicle was compiled at Winchester. It is also difficult to fix the date of composition, but it is generally thought that the chronicles were composed during the reign of Alfred the Great, as Alfred deliberately tried to revive learning and culture during his reign and encouraged the use of English as a written language. The Chronicle, as well as the distribution of copies to other centers of learning, may be a consequence of the changes Alfred introduced. Surviving Manuscripts Of the nine surviving manuscripts, seven are written entirely in Old English. One, known as the bilingual Canterbury Epitome, is in Old English with a translation of each annal into Latin. Another, the Peterborough Chronicle, is in Old English except for the last entry, which is in Early Middle English. The oldest is known as the Winchester Chronicle or the Parker Chronicle. Six of the manuscripts were printed in an 1861 edition for the Rolls series by Benjamin Thorpe with the text laid out in columns labeled A to F. Following this convention, the three additional manuscripts are often called G, H, and I. The surviving manuscripts are listed below. Relationships between the manuscripts the manuscripts are all thought to derive from a common original, but the connections between the texts are more complex than simple inheritance via copying. 
The diagram at right gives an overview of the relationships between the manuscripts. The following is a summary of the relationships that are known. A2 was a copy of A made in Winchester, probably between 1001 and 1013. B was used in the compilation of C at Tabingdon in the mid-11th century. However, the scribe for C also had access to another version, which has not survived. D includes material from Bede's ecclesiastical history and from a set of 8th century Northumbrian annals and is thought to have been copied from a northern version that has not survived. E has material that appears to derive from the same sources as D but does not include some additions that appear only in D, such as the Mercian Register. This manuscript was composed at the monastery in Peterborough. Sometime after a fire there in 1116 that probably destroyed their copy of the Chronicle, E appears to have been created thereafter as a copy of a Kentish version, probably from Canterbury. F appears to include material from the same Canterbury version that was used to create E. Ass's Life of King Alfred, which was written in 893, includes a translation of the Chronicle's entries from 849 to 887. Only a of surviving manuscripts could have been in existence by 893, but there are places where Asa departs from the text in a, so it is possible that Tassa used a version that has not survived. Ethel Weird wrote her translation of the Chronicle into Latin in the late 10th century. The version he used probably came from the same branch in the tree of relationships that a comes from. Asa's text agrees with a and with Ethel Wood's text in some places against the combined testimony of B, C, D and E, implying that there is a common ancestor for the latter form manuscripts. At Tabingdon, sometime between 1120 and 1140, an unknown author wrote a Latin chronicle known as the Annals of St. Neots. This work includes material from a copy of the chronicle, but it is very difficult to tell which version because the analyst was selective about his use of the material. It may have been a northern recension, or a Latin derivative of that recension. All the manuscripts described above share a chronological error between the years 756 and 845, but it is apparent that the composer of the Annals of St. Neots was using a copy that did not have this error and which must have preceded them. Ethel Wood's copy did have the chronological error but it had not lost a whole sentence from Annal 885. All the surviving manuscripts have lost this sentence. Hence the error and the missing sentence must have been introduced in separate copying steps, implying that none of the surviving manuscripts are closer than two removes from the original version. History of the Manuscripts The Winchester Chronicle uh, The Winchester Chronicle is the oldest manuscript of the Chronicle that survives. It was begun at Oldminster, Winchester, towards the end of Alfred's reign. The manuscript begins with a genealogy of Alfred, and the first chronicle entry is for the year 60 BC. The section containing the chronicle takes up folios 1 to 32. Unlike the other manuscripts, A is of early enough composition to show entries dating back to the late 9th century in the hands of different scribes as the entries were made. The first scribe's hand is datable to the late 9th or very early 10th century, his entries cease in late 891, and the following entries were made at intervals throughout the 10th century by several scribes. The eighth scribe wrote the annals for the years 925 to 955, and was clearly at Winchester when he wrote them since he had some material related to events there. He also uses Seaster, or City, to mean Winchester. The manuscript becomes independent of the other recensions after the entry for 975. The book, which also had a copy of the Laws of Alfred IX bound in after the entry for 924, was transferred to Canterbury sometime in the early 11th century, as evidenced by a list of books that Archbishop Parker gave to Corpus Christi. While at Canterbury, some interpolations were made. This required some erasures in the manuscript. 
The additional entries appear to have been taken from a version of the manuscript from which E descends. The last entry in the vernacular is for 1070. After this comes the Latin Acta Lanfranci, which covers church events from 1070 to 1093. This is followed by a list of popes and the archbishops of Canterbury to whom they sent the pallium. The manuscript was acquired by Matthew Parker, Archbishop of Canterbury and Master of Corpus Christi College, Cambridge, following the dissolution of the monasteries, and bequeathed to the college on his death. It now forms part of the Parker Library. The Abingdon Chronicle I.B. The Abingdon Chronicle I was written by a single scribe in the second half of the 10th century. The Chronicle takes up folios 1 to 34. It begins with an entry for 60 BC and ends with the entry for 977. A manuscript that is now separate was originally the introduction to this chronicle. It contains a genealogy, as does a, but extends it to the late 10th century. B was at Abingdon in the mid-11th century, because it was used in the composition of C. Shortly after this it went to Canterbury, where interpolations and corrections were made. As with A, it ends with a list of popes and the archbishops of Canterbury to whom they sent the pallium. The Abingdon Chronicle 2 C, includes additional material from local annals at Abingdon, where it was composed. The section containing the chronicle is preceded by King Alfred's Old English translation of Orosius's world history, followed by a menologium and some gnomic verses of the laws of the natural world and of humanity. Then follows a copy of the chronicle, beginning with 60 BC, the first scribe copied up to the entry for 490, and a second scribe took over up to the entry for 1048. B and C are identical between 491 and 652, but differences thereafter make it clear that the second scribe was also using another copy of the chronicle. This scribe also inserted, after the annal for 915, the Mercian Register, which covers the years 902 to 924, and which focuses on Ethelflaed. The manuscript continues to 1066 and stops in the middle of the description of the Battle of Stamford Bridge. In the 12th century a few lines were added to complete the account. The Worcester Chronicle D. The Worcester Chronicle appears to have been written in the middle of the 11th century. After 1033 it includes some records from Worcester, so it is generally thought to have been composed there. Five different scribes can be identified for the entries up to 1054, after which it appears to have been worked on at intervals. The text includes material from Bede's ecclesiastical history and from a set of 8th-century Northumbrian annals. It is thought that some of the entries may have been composed by Archbishop Wolfstan. D. contains more information than other manuscripts on Northern and Scottish affairs, and it has been speculated that it was a copy intended for the Anglicised Scottish court. From 972 to 1016, the sees of York and Worcester were both held by the same person. Oswald from 972, Eildwulf from 992, and Wolfstan from 1003. And this may explain why a northern recension was to be found at Worcester. By the 16th century, parts of the manuscript were lost. 18 pages were inserted containing substitute entries from other sources, including A, B, C, and E. These pages were written by John Jocelyn, who was secretary to Matthew Parker. The Peterborough Chronicle E. The Peterborough Chronicle In 1116, a fire at the monastery at Peterborough destroyed most of the buildings. The copy of the chronicle kept there may have been lost at that time or later, but in either case shortly thereafter a fresh copy was made. Apparently copied from a Kentish version, most likely to have been from Canterbury. The manuscript was written at one time and by a single scribe, down to the annal for 1121. The scribe added material relating to Peterborough Abbey which is not in other versions. 
The Canterbury original which he copied was similar, but not identical, to D. The Mercian Register does not appear, and a poem about the Battle of Brunimber in 937, which appears in most of the other surviving copies of the Chronicle, is not recorded. The same scribe then continued the annals through to 1131. These entries were made at intervals, and thus are presumably contemporary records. Finally, a second scribe, in 1154, wrote an account of the years 1132 to 1154, but his dating is known to be unreliable. This last entry is in Middle English, rather than Old English. E. was once owned by William Lord, Archbishop of Canterbury 1633 to 1654, so is also known as the Lord Chronicle. The manuscript contains occasional glosses in Latin, and is referred to in an antiquarian book from 1566. According to Jocelyn, Noel had a transcript of the manuscript. Previous owners include William Camden and William Lyle, the latter probably passed the manuscript on to Lord. The Canterbury Bilingual Epitome, F. The Canterbury Bilingual Epitome. At about 1100, a copy of the Chronicle was written at Christ Church, Canterbury, probably by one of the scribes who made notes in a. Uh, this version is written in both Old English and Latin. Each entry in Old English was followed by the Latin version. The version the scribe copied is similar to the version used by the scribe in Peterborough who wrote E, though it seems to have been a Bridged. It includes the same introductory material as D and, along with E, is one of the two chronicles that does not include the Battle of Brunimber poem. The manuscript has many annotations and interlineations, some made by the original scribe and some by later scribes, including Robert Talbot. Copy of the Winchester Chronicle, A2, G, copy of the Winchester Chronicle, A2, was copied from, A, at Winchester in the 11th century and follows a 10th century copy of an Old English translation of Bede's Ecclesiastical, History. The last annal copied was 1001, so the copy was made no earlier than that, an episcopal list appended to, A2, suggests that the copy was made by 1013. This manuscript was almost completely destroyed in the 1731 fire at Ashburnham House, where the Cotton Library was housed. Of the original 34 leaves, 7 remain, ff. 39 to 47 in the manuscript. However, a transcript had been made by Lawrence Noel, a 16th century antiquary which was used by Abraham Wheelock in an edition of the Chronicle printed in 1643. Because of this, it is also sometimes known as W after Wheelock. The appellations A, A2 and G derived from Plummer, Smith and Thorpe, respectively. Cottonian fragment The Cottonian fragment H consists of a single leaf containing annals for 1113 and 1114. In the entry for 1113 it includes the phrase, he came to Winchester, hence it is thought likely that the manuscript was written at Winchester. There is not enough of this manuscript for reliable relationships to other manuscripts to be established. Kerr notes that the entries may have been written contemporarily. Easter Table Chronicle I Easter Table Chronicle A list of chronicle entries accompanies a table of years. Found on folios 133-37 in a badly burned manuscript containing miscellaneous notes on charms, the calculation of dates for church services, and annals pertaining to Christ Church, Canterbury. Most of the Chronicle's entries pertain to Christ Church, Canterbury. Until 1109 they are in English, all but one of the following entries are in Latin. Part of I was written by a scribe soon after 1073, in the same hand and ink as the rest of the Caligulum was. After 1085, the annals are in various contemporary hands. The original analyst century for the Norman conquest is limited to her fourth fed Edward King. A later hand added the coming of William the Conqueror. 
7 Her Comwell Elm. At one point, this manuscript was at St. Augustine's Abbey, Canterbury. Lost manuscripts Two manuscripts are recorded in an old catalogue of the Library of Durham. They are described as Chronica Duo Anglica. In addition, Parker included a manuscript called Hist. Anglia Saxonica in his gifts but the manuscript that included this, now Cambridge University Library MS. HH 1.10, has lost 52 of its leaves, including all of this copy of the Chronicle.